Hi there. Welcome to Sumit Academy. I do hope that you are keeping up with my videos on the various topics like essay writing, English grammar, terrorism and other general subjects. There are a lot more coming. So do subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss them. In this video, we shall talk about the concept of selecting an officer for the armed forces, the Indian Army, the Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force. Most believe that there is little more to a soldier than mere brute strength. But this is far from the truth. They get carried away by the old, old joke of the cartoon where a drill sergeant major roars, Attention! I need three volunteers, you, you and you. Well, truth is really is stranger than this fiction. Like any organization, the armed forces are led by a group of dedicated professionals known as commissioned officers because they are awarded a scroll signed by the President of India called a commission. This is a commission to lay down one's life for the country and lead the men and women under one's command to one's best ability. These group of dedicated officers will one day have to lead a near suicidal mission in the face of enemy bullets, a task unimaginable in the wildest dreams of a managing director or an IAS officer. One may well wonder, is this breed of men and women slightly off their rocker? Or are they willing for the supreme sacrifice merely for the sake of an attractive uniform, perks and subsidized canteen facilities? Well, my dears, man has never lived for bread alone. Once his basic needs are satisfied, he yearns for a higher plane. In this case, a burning desire to safeguard the hard-won freedom and territorial integrity of our motherland. What sort of man or woman is this who can leave the comforts of everyday life, leaving behind their near and dear ones for the bone-chilling winds of the Himalayas or the blinding sandstorms of Rajasthan or the emptiness of a vast ocean or flying at twice the speed of sound or facing anti-aircraft guns high up in the sky, holding their very lives in their hands. It is precisely to find such a man or a woman that the armed forces have an institution called the Service Selection Board, known as the SSB or in the case of the Air Force as the Air Force Selection Board. With selection centers all over the country, these boards work on the basic principle of never lowering their set standards, even if it means rejecting a majority of hopeful candidates. For this is not merely another job. The services are basically looking for persons who can not only garner their intelligence, towards the effective utilization of available resources, but who has a sense of logic, is compatible, affable, cooperative, responsible, dutiful, and by their initiative can take action on their own with ease, confidence, and quickness and can create a reasonable impact on an average group of their peers. Besides a willingness to accept risk, they should be able to sustain their cheer under adverse circumstances. This, of course, is not a description of an ideal man or woman, but that of a potential leader whom men will follow unto death. It is a description of a subordinate and a colleague, an effective instrument in the huge machinery 
safeguarding a motherland. A commonly held belief is that a soldier need not be an intellectual. Nothing is further from the truth. As Colonel Wahi, one of the most dynamic executives of this country who headed the ONGC and General Sundarji, a soldier strategist amongst others, have amply demonstrated. Selecting an officer can be more arduous than winnowing green from chaff. The selection boards follow a three technique system that is so honed to perfection that it requires three independent assessors to build a composite picture of a candidate. Once candidates report to the selection center, they are put through four to five days of pre-planned tests under conditions of simulated stress. These are divided into psychological interview and leadership and group tests. Though the ultimate aim of each of them is the same, that of selecting a candidate who will not be a liability for the organization, the modalities are widely different. Each selection board has a number of qualified psychologists. These men and women with a proven track record and degrees in the field test the journal abilities and certain inherent qualities through a series of tests. They put a candidate under stress, the severity of which keeps increasing gradually. However well prepared a candidate may be, his natural self is exposed to the clinical eyes of the psychologist who endeavors to scrape away the outer crust of poison polish to get at the real individual within. The psychologist is certainly not looking for a finished product to be inducted as an officer the very next day. Based on certain time-tested scientific parameters, they attempt to foresee what a particular man or woman is likely to become after training. They have to judge whether a candidate has the potential and is likely to develop the necessary qualities if placed in a proper training environment. Filtration at this stage is extremely high for only the best candidates are recommended. The next step in the arduous process of winnowing are the group interaction tests. Here a candidate is tested as a potential colleague, subordinate and a leader through a series of group tasks, planning and leadership tasks and, and an open house group discussion on any topic of general interest. This brings forth the ability of the candidate not only to think rationally and coherently but the ability to do so at a rapid pace and put forth convincing arguments. The pink or grey cells of the brain are further juggled through extempore public speaking tests. The element of physical fitness is always of paramount importance in an organization surviving on its battle fitness and the ability to survive in the hardest of terrains. Candidates have to clear a set of hurdles in a given time frame from relatively simple ones like crossing a rope Burma bridge to determined ones like jumping from a 10 foot high platform to courageous ones like the Tarzan leap. And oh yes, I just could not do the leap way back when I faced the Air Force Selection Board in 1980. Another crucial stage for a candidate on his or her way to glory is to face a trained interviewer. In this interaction of thoughts and mind, the candidate is tested for the depth behind the superficial sheen which we all don in everyday life. At liberty to use either English or Hindi, 
the ability to speak intelligently, coherently and with a purpose are what count in this part of the selection procedure. The tests over comes the final stage. For the first time since a particular batch has reported for selection, all the assessors sit together and discuss each candidate threadbare. Degrees and qualifications are taken for granted. What the assessors are now looking for is a man or woman meeting the acceptable standards who can improve with further training to become an effective first a subordinate and then a leader. Every officer has to contribute his might to the fighting forces. The services are definitely not looking for a flawless man or woman, even if any such do exist. They are looking for men and women of natural physical abilities, skills, intellect, and the most important of all, common sense. In other words, men and women with acceptable traits whose personality will suit the peculiar needs of a fighting force. The taste of the pudding is in the eating. That is an age-old adage. The level of performance of our officers, be it in various wars, in quelling internal strife, fighting terrorists, in times of natural calamities and in aiding the civil administration is the best validation of the services selection procedure. So should you give it a try? Well, why not? You must. Go on. This is a once in a lifetime challenge. I was an introvert with only a few outdoor activities. And look, I not only made it, but rose up the rank with God's grace. The Indian Air Force changed me completely or shall I say, groomed me to come out of my shell and give my best. You too can do it. Should you go to SSB Academy for training? Well, why not? But be careful not to start parroting their views or the assessors will quickly catch on. Do learn the basics and go for it. Even if you go to a SSB Without any training, you are not at a disadvantage. Who knows, the natural you may perform better. Now, this was the inaugural, the first of the SSB videos. There will now be seven videos after this, which will give you a detailed procedure of what happens when you reach the SSB. So do like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out on my future videos. And in case you want to get in touch, do drop in a line to sumitacademy20 at gmail.com. Till later then, cheers.